Imagine you go to the barber, you get a haircut, you give him $50 in cash. The barber later that day takes that $50, he goes to the restaurant. He gives the restaurateur $50 for the food and his tip and the tax. The restaurant guy takes that $50 bill. He goes to the supermarket, buys groceries for his shop so he can restore his restaurant. $50 to the teller in Publix. And the guy in Publix takes that $50 out that night and he hands it to his wife. Go get your nails done. She takes that $50, goes to the nail salon. She gets a mani-pedi and she gives them 50 bucks. It's still 50 bucks. Am I right? Let's talk about digital currency. Let's talk about using our debit card or our credit card. So I go to that same barber today. $50. I give him my card. He gets that 50 bucks minus 1.5%. And that barber then goes to the restaurant, buys something, and he hands him the card. And the restaurant who takes the card, it's $50. And they take off another 1.5%. And he goes to the grocery store, to Publix, buys $50 worth the groceries, hands them his card, $50, minus another 1.5%. Gives the card to his wife and just go spend 50 at the salon. She gets a mani and a petty. It's 50 bucks, minus 1.5%. Notice, before that $50 is done, when you're spending cash, you're still $50. Everybody's got $50 worth of goods and services. But when we put it on our cards, essentially digital currency, 1.5% of every transaction at a minimum, where's that going? It's going to the banks. Essentially, who controls the banks? The government. Are you with me? As we moving more towards full digital currency, they want to do away with cash. You're starting to understand why? 